the training. Just a short video, just introduce you to the two versions of Lightroom that you might be considering um, investing in. You probably got the question of which is the right version of Lightroom for me. Um, hopefully this post will help you and this video will, will also introduce you to the software as well so it's not a shock and hopefully you get the right one that, that works for you. They're different pieces of software at the end of the day. They're both going to help you edit your pictures. Personally, I think they come from slightly different angles. Um, Lightroom Classic, which is the one that's on the screen at the moment, the traditional version of Lightroom, if you like, um, is very much desktop based, in my opinion. Um, it's great for batch processing. So if you're going to be editing lots of images um, that have consistency in them, so you might be shooting in a studio, you might be going out and doing a large wedding shoot, you might be um, going on location and doing a great portrait shoot or lots of product photography, then I think classic is the way to go. Its ability to really batch process images for you quickly is absolutely phenomenal and it will save you lots of time. The newer version, Lightroom CC on the other hand, um, which looks a little bit different to what we've got on the screen at the moment. What you can see at the moment is Lightroom Classic. If I just pop down and show you Lightroom CC, um, has a different look and feel to it um, in terms of what's going on, um, the layout of the pictures and the flow. It's very much more a mobile based version. You get lots of synchronization across all your different editing tools. So if you're working on tablets, your phone, your desktop, then Lightroom CC is an absolutely great way to go. It's very streamlined in the tools you get. You get a similar selection to tools. I just don't find that the batch processing works so well. You're tending to sort of copy and paste your settings. Um, on iOS now, so if you're using your phone, you can paste these to multiple images at once. But for me, if that's the route you really wanna go down, your batch processing, then I think Classic um, is the way to go. This is classic. Let me introduce you to it. Here's your main screen. There's lots of different modules here. I don't know if you can see these at the top. I'll move, wiggle the mouse around. You've got your library, your develop, your map, your book, your slideshow, print web. It can be overwhelming when you start to look at this stuff, um, but really it shouldn't be that much. You're mainly going to work with your library and your develop module. For most people I know, these are the modules they work with. Your library is how you can manage and control all of your images that you've got in your catalog. Develop is where you come along and start doing your editing. There's lots of options down here. Again, don't let this bewilder you. I'll just come over to this side panel. Lots of menus here. Just about everything you're gonna do, you probably end up doing start with in this basic section. Don't be overwhelmed by it. We've got the ability to control the exposure and the brightness here. Some contrast. Key sections here, really useful. Your highlights and shadows. The brightest part of your picture is gonna be your highlights. It's generally the sky. And in something like Lightroom, I can control that separately to everything else. In the same way, I can do that with the shadows. Just moving this slider around, playing with it. Hopefully you can see the effect that's having on the screen and these darker areas around here in particular. You can see when I play around with the shadows, I can start to really get some if great effects. The present section down here is very interesting. This can start to really reveal some additional detail for you. Let me just lift the shadows. You'll see by playing around with this clarity, I'm trying to really bring out the texture and detail there. If you can see it in the mountain in the background and the sky, that's having a great effect. And in vibrance and saturation really lets you play around with your colors. So you can take images very quickly. If I put that here, let's pick a different image. You can start to really make some changes in Lightroom very quickly just by moving around within this section and really start to be getting some great effects. Just want to lose a bit of color, I'll desaturate it. Want to have rich colors, I can boost the saturation. There's no right or wrong here. I'm really just playing around looking for the effect I want to. One of the great features of Lightroom just over here, you get to see your before and afterwards. And that's a beautiful feature to really see if you're making some difference with your images. At the bottom, these are the images that I'm working with at any point in time. I get lots of control over that, which images I wanna see, which ones I want to edit. Let me just show you and introduce you to this batch processing. So we'll come back to a single view here. And I'll just show you with some of these images, just to give you an idea of the power 
of Lightroom and its speed of use. Got some dark sections here. Again, the darkest part of the picture is going to be your shadow. So if I just lift that up, you can see lots of detail. I've lost the sky, not much too, de not too much detail there. I'm just going to bring back your highlights here. And you can see, wow, we can really start to make some difference to this picture if I start to chop and change it around there. You can see the before and afterwards. Look at the great difference that's made to the picture. Even better than that, in Lightroom, I can come to my next picture. And this is where the power of it really starts coming to the front. Down here, I've got a previous button. That's going to apply the changes from the previous picture for me. And if I come along, I'm going to hold down the shift button here and select these next three or four pictures. That selected all of them for me. Hopefully you can see that at the bottom. I held down shift, just selected all the pictures. And now the previous button has become a synchronized button. If I click on that, I've now got lots of options. All I'm basically doing here is applying those changes from these pictures to the rest in the batch. So now I can come along and it's made a lot of these changes for me. I can just top them up if I don't feel it's done the job fully for me. But really, I'm editing lots of pictures very quickly here. The other good thing about Lightroom is I'm not damaging my originals. They remain untouched. That's how I can pop just down here and have a look at the before and afterwards um, with my images. That was a bit confusing. That image had already been edited into black and white, so it's had that one. If we come down to some of these, the originals hadn't been touched previously, and you can see the improvements we were really making. So a flying quick overview of why we like classic, some of its main features. I can export these pictures so when I finished editing. I can chuck lots of images out into different folders. High resolution if I'm going to print them. I can batch process these and chuck them into a folder if I want to chuck them onto the web in a low resolution. Um, just working with groups of images, you can't beat Lightroom Classic in my opinion. Now, if you want to be working across multiple devices, that's when Lightroom, rather than Lightroom Classic, comes into its own. It's a different interface. I'd say it's a bit cleaner. It's not so busy. There's not so much going on. This is the home button up here. If we come here, gives you lots of help. It's nice and straightforward. Your original images, when you work with um, Lightroom CC, are actually held up in the cloud. And it's that cloud hosting that allows you to then access your high-res pictures from any of your editing devices, be that your phone, your tablet, your desktop, you name it. You can use different um, editing devices to manipulate your pictures and those changes are transferred between the bits of kit. So are really useful. If you're somebody that likes to be editing on your phone, on your tablet, I think Lightroom CC is a great way to go. Um, if you're traveling a lot and you have your tablet with you, it's a really good uh, mechanism for that. As I said earlier, I don't find its ability to batch process quite so good. You can do it, but you're sort of cutting and pasting your changes rather than anything else. But if we just come in and have a look at an image here, let's just pick an image. Now, the main menu is over this side. Here's a lot of your tools. They're sort of tucked away to keep the uh, screen clean. Here's the editing tools again. They're sort of hidden away. I like to keep everything nice and tidy. But you'll see I've got tools such as my highlights and shadows here. So I can still start to make these changes to the dark areas. Overall changes to the whole picture. I want to play around with the highlights. If you remember, that's the brightest part of the picture. I can do that. Can you see what's happening to the sky in the background without it overly affecting the brickwork on the inside of that image in the castle? So again, we've got lots of great tools down here. Again, you probably find if you're starting out, this is a very nice tool to work with. Start with not so many tools to uh, confuse you. Um, however, if you're maybe going to go on, let's say, and take your photography very seriously in terms of semi-professionally, professionally, um, and you're likely to be working with larger volumes of images, then you may well want to consider um, that you work with the Lightroom Classic because uh, it can save you uh, an awful lot of time. We're talking literally hours and days worth of work with its uh, batch processing. I hope that's given you a good introduction, um, an overview of the two screens. If you've got one version uh, rather than the other, or you're thinking investing in one or the other, that's a brief overview. 
Love to hear from you. If you've got any uh, questions, drop me an email on nick at unshaken.co.uk um, and keep an eye on our blog for uh, more posts. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.